I believe that uh, the the cutting edge of fascism in the U.S. is not just the 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 the, the Trumpians and and those elements as dangerous as they are. To me, the cutting edge of a particular kind of U.S. fascism is, in fact, the 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 elements that control the Democratic Party, the neoliberal elements that control the Democrat Party. They are the ones that are developing a particular kind of of fascism that people don't even seem to be able to recognize. So- and what do you mean about the this particular kind of uh, American fascism that is uh, that the neoliberal Democratic Party is on the edge of? Can you elaborate on that? That is a fascism framed as a a, a, a defense of democracy. That it is a, a totalitarianism that seems to be unrecognizable by most of the people who support the Democrat Party. They so focus focus on the behaviorism, uh, the 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 the, the uh, show being put on by Trump and the right over there, DeSantis and others, and that, and that understanding the the threat that we face when you have the legitimation of a, a political position that says that we have to have Big Brother to determine who how we think and what information we have that you cannot deviate from the, the party line, the state line on Ukraine, uh, that uh, it's all right for, uh, for, for the, the financial sector to make billions of dollars, you know, um, uh, and, 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 but they, you can't touch, you know, a Pentagon spending and there's no opposition. That it's all right for uh, Democrats who control these various cities to charge people with, with domestic terrorism, you know, this is the kind of, of fascist right in front of our faces that's being pushed by uh, these neoliberal uh, Democrats. And so, you know, we are trying to call attention to that. We're not saying that the Trumpian folks are not dangerous. They are. But, you know, while you are watching them, you know, you, you got these folks behind the curtain who are really, you know, they're the ones that control the state. They are the, they, these neoliberals are the ones that control the state. You remember at the height of the Trumpian uh, uh, experience and, and people were talking about, you know, the deep state and then the, the liberals, oh, that's, you know, the deep state, it doesn't exist. But then you had the identification of the opposition in the Trump administration and they referred to them not as the deep state, but as the steady state. What in the hell is that? If that's not the deep state, okay? So we... <laughs> Is right on front of us, but people, people are not thinking. So, you know, the kind of fascism that we've been exposed to as African people in the U.S., the fascism uh, that was has been part of the colonial project, is the, the fascism that's now being blown back on Europe in the form of this conflict in Eastern, uh, Eastern Europe, which is something that even I didn't believe was going to happen. This is what's happening across, across the Western world. Even Obama didn't want this to happen. That's what, you know, kind of I find so uh, shocking. Obama himself, I mean, Aaron Mate, my, the co-host of Useful Idiots with me, talks about this a lot, which is that Obama himself was asked about arming Ukraine, and he said it wasn't a good idea to do it. And all these people who consider him to be this brilliant, you know, uh, constitutional law professor, very uh, sober, rational thinker, same thing. I mean, I bring this up with Assange too. Like he he realized that he couldn't go after Assange too too hard because of the New York Times problem, which is that if if Assange broke the law by publishing what he published, then so did the New York Times. But exactly. similarly, I just I, I'm so uh, incredulous, although maybe that's naive, but I'm incredulous that the same people who love Barack Obama don't realize that he he also thought it would be a bad idea. He like us, like you and I, like the two of us here. He thought it would be a bad idea to fund Ukraine. You know, there, there was a time you don't you didn't have to be a radical to just think that mm. that would be a bad idea. Well, which is true, Katie. But at the same time, um, they he, they did pursue policies that, that laid the foundation for the current oh, conflict. Yes, to- totally. I, I mean, I'm not even giving him credit on, for that. It's just interesting to me that just for liberals who who like Obama so much, you'd think that maybe they would, they'd remember that part, but it, it wasn't. Yeah. The media didn't pick it up because they, the media didn't like that. No, no. And, and it's, it's interesting too that 
that there was a there was a, a sensitivity to the the track that they were on in terms of of arming rearming Ukraine, uh, developing the military, uh, uh, looking at the possibility of of heavy weapons being introduced into the theater. There was a concern because they knew they were they were they were approaching that red line, uh, but they continued to to go ahead. They were and and, and they went right into the Trump administration while people were talking about Trump being a Putin poodle or whatever. Right. His, he made decisions to allow for even more heavier weapons to go to go to uh, to Ukraine. Right. So everybody is implicated in this this disaster of Ukraine. 